Hey, Andre, I've always had this nagging question in the back of my head. What's that? Why do they call mid-sized trucks, which are the smallest <laughs> trucks, mid-sized? It makes no sense, dude. And why are full-size trucks not the mid-sized trucks? Because those are like in the middle. Well, do you really want to get into this? All right, no. <laughs> let's just talk about mid-sized trucks today. Uh, because today is our you know, small truck show, and there's a lot of news about a lot of small trucks. So if you're fans of the... Uh, Nissan, of course, Frontier, or perhaps the GM products, or do we even have Toyota news? We have, you actually have Tacoma news? Yeah, so how about this? How about we go over every uh, new midsize truck, the yep. smallest trucks available in the United States for 2021, and each manufacturer has, actually has something to offer, new. Wow, even Ridgeline? Yes. Oh, cool, <laughs> all right. All right, so coming up right now on Talking Trucks, we're gonna be talking mid-size trucks. And no, they're not mid-size, they're small. Thank you for joining TFL Talking Trucks podcast. If you love pickup trucks or big full-size SUVs, if you love trailering, towing, and going off-road, this is the right place to be. Together, we can make this podcast the most popular ever. All right, Andre, uh, let's start with, well, you've got a whole list that you went through. Shall we start with the big news first? And that is, of course, the new Frontier. Yeah, so the last oldest night- truck. Last night was a buzz. Yeah. Nissan trucks um, launched the new 2021 uh, refreshed Navara. In America? Is, uh, no. Hmm. They launched it worldwide, and it specifically was kind of targeted at Australian markets, Thailand, some other world markets, um, South America, etc. And uh, they had this beautiful video created that made a presentation. And in that presentation, and I'm actually, uh, if you're watching this on YouTube, TFL Talk, um, channel. I'm actually recording my screen because they actually pre previewed or gave us a sneak peek at the US version of the Frontier coming yeah. up next gen. Yeah, so that's a little confusing, right? So Nissan does kind of like Toyota as well, right? In the rest of the world, the small Toyota truck is the Hilux. Mm -hmm. Of course, here is the Tacoma. And in the rest of the world, the small Nissan truck is the Navara, right. which we often get pictures of. In America, people love you guys sending us pictures right. of, of cool trucks you've seen, but there's a lot of them in Mexico and they occasionally come up <laughs> right. to America and they're not the new Frontier. It's just, you know, the Navara is sold in Mexico and the Frontier is sold in America. And the Frontier, let's face it, is the oldest truck in the land, at least in the U.S. Yeah, and actually some Frontier. other markets call it Frontier too. Yep. They also call it MP300. Wow. There's, there's many, many different names, but uh, these trucks are very similar. So how, how old is the Frontier? Well, in the United States, it came out in 2005 uh, year. Dude, you were like 12 back then. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, I was. Well, no, I wasn't. I wish I was. Uh, but it's, it's, 13. It's, it's, it's aging. It's aging. Like, yes, your point is well taken. And It's uh, a good truck. We had one for long term. We, yeah. we had kind of the work truck version of it. You know, right. it was white. Which not, nothing says more work truck than white. It's king cap, <laughs> right. five speed, manual. And more, more plastic in, than in a Coke bottle. <laughs> but uh, it was dead reliable. It was you know, everything you wanted in a truck and nothing you didn't, including roll up windows. Yeah, so, so yes, yeah, so this generation, uh, I actually think it was more like 2006, 2007. We're still having 2020 trucks are on sale now, right? Yep. The Nissan Frontier in the United States. Uh, and then what's happening is they introduce a new engine, right? Right. So for this year in the United States, they um, introduced the old 4 liter is gone, the old V6, they discontinued it. And it's now the 3.8 liter V6 that's mostly redesigned. So what do you think the dealership network is saying to Nissan when they kept the body the same but put it in a new engine. You, th I you th think dealers love that when you walk into the dealership and you, you look at this is the brand new 2020 Nissan Frontier and then the customer's like, uh, yeah, looks like the old but like, No, 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 look under the hood. Look, and like, I don't care what's under the hood. I, I want to know why it looks the same as last year's truck. So I don't, I'm not sure a lot of people are happy about this. And I think the sales are kind of showing that. The Frontier sales have kind of gone down last quarter. But of course, it's been 2020. It's been a very tough year for everybody. So anyway, what do you think about this image right here? Uh, this was leaked. Well, not really leaked. Nissan published this video with this image. You know, I think it looks a lot like the Navara. It's got well, a lot of Navara in it. Yeah, but you know what else? It has. A, I think it has a lot of Nissan Titan in it. Yeah. It also looks wider and just kind of more upright. It's kind of like, you know, GM fist in the wind. 
Yeah, yeah, you know, Nissan has been, uh, uh, I think, struggling uh, to come up with kind of a design language for not just the Frontier, but also the Titan, right? The, the, the number one comment we get when we post a Titan video is it looks like a Ford F-150. Like it's very kind of derivative of that design language. Uh, and so I think, uh, you know, Nissan had an opportunity when they came out with the Warrior concept. This was what, like five years ago now? Right. Yeah, probably about four right, right, years. To, yeah. yeah, which was just a beautiful truck, right? It was basically a Titan taken to Raptor levels of design. Yeah, it was wide, mean, yeah. and big. And they had they, they had this opportunity, I think, to you know to have their own design language. And the designer of that eventually, I think, left and has done a lot of other really cool vehicles. Uh, uh, and I think one of the one of the things that Nissan needs right now is something unique that's not derivative. You know, the, the trucks have always been very solid. Uh, they've always been a great value. Reliable. They've been reliable. Yeah. Um, you know, they've done everything the other trucks do. But they've been kind of the wild child in the truck world, right? It's not like if you lift them, you know, and if you put big offsets on them, and if you put big fender flares, and they start to look cool. But when you go to the store, it's just kind of, you know, plain Jane, unfortunately. When you go to the dealership, there's not anything that, that, that you know, in my mind, that makes it stand out, except maybe the orange that they're using now, in, the, in you know, to show that it's off-roading. You mean it's lava red? They call oh, sorry, it lava red. Lava red. red. Yeah. Uh, no, but dude, I think they're uh, gaining back in the design department. Just look at these trucks. Let me show you the Navara, yeah. which has been refreshed. Um, so, so first of all, guys, we don't have a lot of specs or information or images about the U.S. Frontier and Next Gen. All we have is this kind of teaser image. But the Navara is fully unveiled, full debut. Um, they updated the Front grill. Hey, it's it, huge. Look, look at this. Uh, front who grill. Who would have thunk another vehicle with a huge front grill? Even this is what I'm talking about, Andre. <laughs> right? Do you see the new Sienna? It's got the huge front grill. Do you yes. see the new BMW? Uh, Big you know, grill. M3 and M4. Yes. It's got the huge nostril front grill. I know you. What you guys do? The designers all sit around on some Zoom meeting <laughs> and say 2020 will be the year of the massive grill. Toyota started with the spindle grill, and now we're all going to jump on board. Uh, I think it's been more than a year that they've been talking about this yeah. uh, because uh, the grills are bigger, that is they're a, no, meaner. That is, a, that, is a, that is a that is a like a warthog nose on that thing, man. Yeah, and you see, it's got new LED headlights, and it looks kind of like almost like spider eyes, you know, just kind of coming at you. So I think, I mean, the design is now stronger, um, and for of course other markets like Australia and Thailand and South America and other parts of the world. Uh, they've updated. They kind of left the engines the same, so it's kind of a more. So that a venerable V6 carries on. No, no, they're using diesels. Oh, that yeah. Makes sense. Overseas, they're using diesels. Actually, two versions of their 2.3 liter diesel. So, so all of that is happening, and now they made it a Pro 4X for the rest of the world with off-road additions, little nice touches throughout, little you know, lava red, orange. Uh, trim pieces and more payload capacity. You know, this new Navara has like something like 1,200 kilograms or two and a half thousand pounds of payload. Wow. Which is crazy, crazy wow. high. Yeah, yeah. You know, um, Nissan is a very popular truck worldwide. Uh, and, uh, you know, it's one of those forbidden fruit that, that we don't get that we'd like to drive. I actually uh, tried really hard last time I was in Europe. This was long before COVID. Uh, I tried to get my hands on the Mercedes version, right? Uh, because the Mercedes. X class. Yeah, X class. Yeah. They rebranded the, the Navara uh, to see what it was like. And Mercedes did not want to lend me one. I actually, uh, I think um, uh, they knew that it was going away. So they, <laughs> they discontinued it. They, they weren't too keen on getting us, getting us one. So, bottom line, dude, uh, the Navara is brand new or been refreshed. Refreshed. It's going to go on sale uh, in other markets, uh, like right at, in the new year. And uh, we still don't have a frontier. Yeah. What about the frontier? When, what do we know about that? When is that coming? They promised it to us. This is 2021. We are now in November. Yes. And usually, if this were normal year, we probably would have had an auto show by now, or we'd be heading into the LA Auto Show. Right. Like SEMA was supposed to just happen. Right. It wasn't right. there. Um, so when are they unveiling this thing? When are we? We, we don't know. We don't have a date. Huh. So. So we have to survive without it. Yeah. Uh, All right. For now. All right. Well, there you go. There's your uh, Nissan preview, right? Because that is a real preview. Anything uh, else that we need to cover, Andre? I know you wrote up the story. Is there anything else that, that that's you know relevant well, or perhaps uh, coming to America? Well, as far as Nissan is concerned, yeah. uh, well, we have everything on TFL Truck. Yep. I'm showing you, if you're watching this, I'm showing you tfltruck.com. All those stories are there. You can search for each manufacturer and each truck. 
Um, but the story with the Nissan Navara, like I said, they're adding technology, um, driver assistance technologies, you know, blind spot monitoring, all that stuff. Basically the stuff that you already find on the Titan? Well, Titan, yeah, yeah. Titan just un re released it. And of course, it's going to be for sale there. We don't know exactly what when the U.S. frontier will be actually here. We're hoping this year they'll debut it and maybe it's coming in a few months. We don't have a date yet. But you know what's here? What? It's the new 2021 Chevy Colorado. All right, now yes. we're in GM products. So what's new about the Colorado? Heck yeah, well, these 2021 trucks are here. Okay. They're in dealers. And let's start with the Chevy Colorado. Okay. For 2021, it gets a new nose. That's great. Can you tell the difference? No. <laughs> okay. So, so it's a mild refresh. Uh, I don't blame you for not uh, actually recognizing every difference. But they actually redesigned the lower part of the front bumper. It's now a little bit wider. So the chin is protruding just a little bit further. So that's how you can tell the model year by more of an overbite? <laughs> or an underbite? No, it's more of an underbite. <laughs> okay. The chin is actually more masculine and it's got the fog lamps at the maybe, back. Maybe they gave it a beard. You know, beards are big right now. So maybe, <laughs> maybe they decided, maybe there was like some cool stylist like, hey, this thing needs like a hipster beard. Yeah, it, it has one. Yeah. You know what else it has? What? It has Chevrolet stamped into the tailgate. I've never Every seen that before. <laughs> Everybody's stamping their tailgates. I remember, huh? I remember when, who did that? That was a, when's the first time? There was a Tundra. Toyota Tundra. Remember yeah. Tundra, like, in, yes. the, in the last refresh did it. And then Ford called us. Oh, no, we did it first. Yeah, we did it back in 1902. <laughs> <laughs> we stamped Ford on our trucks. <laughs> you know what would be something cool? If they stamped Ford on the back of that Colorado. Now, that would be something. <laughs> So it's got a lot of stamps, but but dude, seriously. Uh, so this uh, truck, the new Colorado, is mostly the same. The interior is mostly the same. They've upgraded some of the technologies. They're leaving the engine lineup the same. There's still the four-cylinder gas, the V6 gas, and the four-cylinder turbo diesel, the Duramax. All that remains the same. You know, you and, know, the, the mid-size yeah. truck world has been very sleepy, right? For a long time, there was you know a handful of trucks and nobody wanted to compete, right? Ford pulled out of the mid-size truck world because they didn't want a cannibalizing F-150 sales, right? Uh, GM wasn't in the game. And it was really uh, uh, Nissan, Honda. And Toyota. And Toyota yeah, were the only three players. Yeah. And then about- And Dakota went away, of course, the Dodge. Yeah, Dodge Ram Dakota. Right. Right. And then like three years ago, it all like, uh, four years ago, GM came yeah. back with the, of course, Colorado uh, and the GMC. Uh, and uh, yeah, Ford said, oh, heck no, we're, we're not gonna walk away from this. And they brought the Ranger in. And uh, then Jeep jumps in. And then Jeep jumps with the Gladiator. Yeah. Uh, it's just been uh, crazy how much competition there has been in this mid-sized field. Uh, and let's face it, I don't know how big the electric trucks are gonna be. You know, I'm, I'm thinking the Cybertruck's probably gonna be more of a full-size truck, but the Rivian is actually a mid-sized truck. Yeah, kind of like kind of a little bit, a little bit yeah, smaller, yeah, like yeah. a Gladiator would be. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And so, but a lot of uh, listeners and viewers are probably wondering, when are we going to get a brand new, all new Colorado? Uh, the there, interior is getting all dated. Yeah, the yeah. interior and some of the features, you know, they, they don't have a push button start yet. No, they have a key. Yeah, they just have a really good, which a lot of people actually love uh, instead of uh, have, having a push button. Um, they're saying maybe 2023. Okay. So we have to wait at least one more model year before the all new Colorado GMC Canyons, uh, you know, and Chevy Colorados are actually here. So right now, just small updates. So right now, you, if you want, you know, a little bit more um, of a modern look to it, um, go get yourself one of uh, one of these bad boys. And look at this, the new Colorado ZR2. Yeah, what about it? What has a giant that? grill. Get it, out. It, it looks like a predator uh, or some sort of an alien thing. Yeah. You're right. Yeah, so it's really aggressive. Really, really cool. Uh, once again, the suspension remains the same on the ZR2. Um, and then we just tested this truck. Uh, they have a new uh, trim level for the GMC Canyon that yep. just came out, the AT4, which is their off-road edition of the Canyon. But it's more of a mild thing, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's you know G GMC has gone more kind of in the luxury realm, and so a lot of the things they're doing that are quote-unquote off-roady are, are, are more styled in substance. I think that would be fair to say. You know, like, you know, putting big recovery hooks on the thing and painting them. They're red. They're red, yeah, yes. painting them red. Um, so I was expecting the 84 to be a ZR2, right, like taken to the luxury level, but it's not a ZR2 underneath, right? It's still, it does not have the DSSV spool valve shocks. It does have the uh, Duratrack aggressive tires, though. Um, no lift. 
you know, no lift, no, it's not any wider. So it's, it's not a ZR, it's not the GMC version of the ZR2. No, it's, it's no. not. It's just kind of a, a little bit more luxurious uh, off-road edition of the Canyon. And then, of course, Andre, you know, we were speaking about diesel uh, frontiers. If you do want a diesel midsize truck, there's only one available, and that is the baby Duramax that's in the, in the Chevy products. So, yeah, and the Jeep is not quite here yet. So if you the want Jeep that... The Jeep diesel. Yeah, well, you know, the Jeep diesel, yeah. <laughs> the well, Jeep diesel. Well, you know, wait, wait. It was supposed to be here, like... Last year, right? A few months ago, yes. Uh, well, it was supposed to be in the in the it was supposed to be in the Wrangler like a year and a half ago, and that got delayed. And then they were going to put it in, you know. So it's it's being it's being delayed, but it's at least um, it's at least uh, you know. A va- well, when do we get ours? We uh, in two weeks. Yeah, we're getting one to test. Okay, that's but good. I just called I, last week. I was talking to the dealer, yeah. you know, uh, Johnson Auto Plaza. Right. They uh, they ordered them in July. Okay. The diesel gladiators. Yeah. And they're still not on the lot. All right. So if let me rephrase that. So if you do want one today, you can go get the Baby Duramax. If you hold off a couple more weeks, you can go get the Gladiator. Hopefully. Yes. Hopefully. And we we haven't tested it, so we don't know much about it. Yeah. And and the um, we know much about it, but we don't know much about it from like real life experience. Real like towing, yeah. hauling, exactly. all that stuff. So let's switch gears. So we did uh, Nissan and GM. Yep. Uh, let's switch gears to Ford. Right. Ford is still here. Yeah. The Ranger. Yeah, and the exciting news for 2021 in the Ford It's world, got a huge nose? Uh, no, no, actually it's, it, it's getting red accents. Oh! <laughs> well, that's different. No, so I'm talking about the 2021 uh, the Ford Tremor. Ranger Tremor. Which, which, of course, in the heavy-duty truck is, uh, you know, yeah. the, the... The big, burly, burly super duty. The lift, the, yes. you know, all, all the off-roady goodies. Uh, but what is a Tremor version in... A, Ranger, dude. Dude, I I love the, this idea okay. of a Ranger Tremor, and here's a, here's a couple of things that gets you. So we know that the Ranger had the FX4 yep. for a couple of years now, which is their off-road package, but now this Tremor takes it to the next level. Um, Dare getting, I say Raptor level, or is that no? no. It's not, I wouldn't say Ranger Raptor level. So it's kind of a next step, but not all the way to Raptor. All right, so. Let's say the top dog off-roader was the FX4. What do I get if I go for the Tremor? What, what in you're addition getting, to them? You're getting a small suspension lift, about one to two inches. You're getting Fox 2.0 shocks, which are special shocks, uh, versus the FX4, which was Ford branded shock. You're get, now getting 32-inch tall tires, wow, bigger 32, tires. All right. Okay. You're getting fender flares, Tremor seats, auxiliary switches, side steps, and graphics. How much am I paying for all this? Uh, you're paying. You know, you're paying about forty two to forty three hundred bucks. Oh, that ain't cheap, dude. That's no. cheaper than if you if, if you wanted to build it yourself, right? If you wanted to go aftermarket. Yes. Uh, and it wouldn't be warrantied, but it's still not cheap. So you know, forty two hundred dollars on top of an FX four. Now you're getting into like F one fifty. You know, they didn't want to cannibalize F one fifty sales. <laughs> Well, now you're cannibalizing F-150 sales. But here's the thing. They're offering the Tremor package on the XLT. So you don't have to buy, like, the most option truck. You can kind of put the Tremor package. So like, what, are we, what are we looking at? How much? 40 grand. Uh, they, you, can get a pretty they, good, you can get a pretty good F-150 yeah, for 40 grand. Yeah, you can. Yeah, yeah so, so the, the, there is overlap for sure. And they're saying the most expensive uh, Ranger Lariat Tremor will be about 45. So forty-five grand gets you a pretty good F one fifty as well. Yeah, yeah. And now so. you're talking, you know, an FX four. Yeah, and you're getting all the capability of a full size truck with all the room, uh, the bed, you know, all the goodies. But if you want a small off roady truck, I, I, you know, obviously the segment leader is Tacoma, and it feels like they're going after the TRD Pro, right? Yeah, that, that, absolutely. That, 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 they, it's like it's like they once again they benchmarked the TRD Pro and they said boop 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 boop. So we're gonna go boop 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 boop. Yeah, and they're and, staying- and those boops are like lift tires, you know. And width too, width, and yeah. the width is one inch wider because of the offset on the wheels. So they didn't create new axles or new A arms or anything like that. But so you like it? I think I, I haven't driven it yet. Yeah. But and the, we may never. <laughs> I, I may we may never drive it. But yeah. I love the idea that they're actually offering this next level, um, and actually going after the TRD Pro. Yeah, it's cool. I mean, you know, once again, the more options, the more competition, the more. Um, Choice well, is better for right? us. The more cho- it's all better for us. So yeah. I, I applaud anybody who gives us more choice because at the end of the day, it's all good. All right, are you ready to switch gears one more time? All right, what are we switching to now? We're going into the Honda world. Ah, the yes. Ridgeline. All right. Yes, because for 2021, and they Honda, gave it a low range. No, uh, 
No, for 2021, and this was kind of a surprise to me, they did a thorough refresh on the Ridgeline. Yeah, it is very different. Uh, they certainly took it up a few levels in terms of kind of its off-road look. Yeah, but you know what I was expecting? What? I was expecting like a fire-breathing, like Raptor Baja, fire. Baja running. Ba yes, but, but what we got was kind of a refresh up front. Kangaroo jumping. <laughs> We got a refresh up front, new grill, new lights, uh, design, new bumper. It looks a little bit more macho, but <laughs> this, this may sound cruel, but the, you know, the Honda Ridgeline is the truck that 95% of all truck buyers need, but 95% don't buy. Because trucks are, especially like the off-road trucks are aspirational, right? So, so people who buy these trucks don't buy them for the way they're going to use them. They buy them for the way they want to use them. Yes. Uh, and the Ridgeline is one of the best trucks out there for the way you're going to use it, right? It's got incredible ride. It's got incredible utility. It's got extremely thoughtful engineering. Uh, you know, it's, it's, it's as car-like as you can get without actually being a car. Mm -hmm. uh, and yet, you know, the things that people buy trucks for, like a low range, it doesn't have. Uh, not that most of us, you know, out on the show, you know, if you live in Florida, when are you going to get to use a low range? Seriously. You know, it's well, unless flat. you go mudding, it's a mud hole somewhere. Yeah, or sand maybe, I guess. <laughs> yeah. But you can't, you know, only in Daytona can you drive on the beach. You see what I'm saying? I, yeah. it's, it, it's, 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 you know, you're going to drive that thing most of your life on road, and it's perfect for that, but it doesn't have the things that people want to, to have for that one or two times where you're going to use it off road. But it's a cool truck. I think they've done, you know, they've gone a long way to making it less, um, less pilot. Yeah, less piloty and more trucky. <laughs> yeah, I think so. And I, I know I was initially saying, you know, I'm a little disappointed, uh, but but they did a lot. Uh, it, like you said, it still has great driving characteristics. It still has a nine-speed automatic. The V6 is still there, and they have torque vectoring all-wheel drive. I mean, it, it's really fancy stuff, but I wish they would give it more ground clearance, maybe make it a little yeah, bit more Honda macho. Honda is, is baffling to me because Honda, in a lot of their other motorsport you know, outlets, right, they have incredible dirt bikes, they have incredible side-by-sides, and yet as a car manufacturer, they just don't do off-road, which is weird because all the other Japanese do off-road, right? So certainly Toyota does off-road, certainly Nissan does off-road, certainly Mitsubishi does off-road. And yet Honda doesn't really have, like there's no classic Honda off-roader, right? With Toyota, there's the FJ, yeah, right? With uh, Mitsubishi, there's the Pajero, right? With, with Nissan, there's the Patrol. Or the Xterra, you know, et cetera. But there's right. nothing, you know, uh, the closest they get is maybe a passport with some body cladding. Yeah, it, it's puzzling, but you now they have the side-by-side, -side, the talent. And dare I mention Subaru. <laughs> <laughs> Subaru is a little bit light on, on their off-roading machines. But, but they have them. Yeah, but you know they build motorcycles, dirt bikes, side-by-sides. Yeah, yeah, hardcore off-road vehicles, yeah. right? The yeah. talent is a hardcore racing side-by-side, -side yeah, potentially, it, it right? Uh, you know, some of the best motocross bikes that I've ever ridden are Hondas. Uh, the Africa Twin, you know, incredible, glorious uh, adventure tour, and yet with their vehicles, they s somehow like. And I think that's got to be a conscious decision on the part of Honda Japan, right? And I think they were kind of caught flat-footed when all, all the world decided that overlanding was the hottest thing, and they, everybody wanted to go off-road, and they were like, "What do we do?" And so finally, they're slowly starting to catch up. Um, and we did a, can remember a couple of years ago, we did a mid-sized truck shootout where we took all the mid-sized trucks and yeah, we drove did. them from here up to the mountains. And, and I think unanimously, we thought the Honda was best on road. Yeah, but then the transmission it was overheated to overheat off. It was the first one that overheated and yeah. we had to leave it on the side of the trail because it didn't have a low range, right? It's that that because you were going brake gas, brake gas. gas. It, was trying, it was trying to send power to wherever there was traction and eventually just said, this is too much. Yeah, so now, so now they have Honda Performance Development, HPD, they're calling it uh, special edition with special wheels. Um, but un underneath, it's mostly the same, still kind of the same payload, same towing, 5,000 pounds. Yep. So they're not leading you know, the towing game either. And they, like, think about it, they were the first to do a cool tailgate, right? Because they had one that yeah. hinged and swung. And they still have that, and it's still the trunk. You know, the, it's still the, the sub-trunk. The sub-trunk in the bed, but which yeah, is really I'm kind of cool. hot and warm on that. It's cool, you, know, they, you fill up with beer and go tailgating, <laughs> but you, know, you fill up with something important, and then you stick something in the bed, and you, and you can't can get, get at it. Yeah. And the spare tire is under there. Yeah, 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 that's a problem. So, so yeah, so that's the Honda news. Uh, we're supposed to get one for testing too. I hope so. But 
after this uh, podcast, maybe not. No, I'm just I, no, I think I'm I think I'm, I think I'm being you know realistic about, it. and I think Honda knows this. This is not something. I'm not the first one to notice that, that there's no real like. None of their vehicles have a low range. What else do I need to say? Yeah, but they have really high tech all wheel drive systems. Right. So let's go to something that does have low range. Okay. Uh, this is uh, the update for the 2021 Jeep Gladiator. We we mentioned the Jeep um, already, but they have some extra news. What is it? This. Oh, what is that, Andre? That's a that's a new uh, Willys edition. Oh, they have like so they've been a Willys Wrangler for a long time. Right. B basically, it's like one. You know, there's like three kinds of Wranglers, right? Uh, there's a Sport, which think about it as the entry level. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's the basic one, uh, and then at the top of that spectrum is of course the rubicon and the mojave right right for the gladiator for the gladiator yeah. well no the mojave is the desert runner i'm just talking yes. about the wrangler now so you've got the rubicon and you've got the sport and in between is kind of the city slicker jeep which is the sahara mm -hmm. right that's the one that, that, that is more urban uh and with the gladiator right you've had the same kind of structure so you had the sport right mm -hmm. which was the one that, that is the entry level then you had the rubicon right, right. Uh, and then what they did was they created the Mojave, which is kind of their answer to the Raptor, a desert runner. Whether that's successful or not, you have to watch one of our uh, videos when we reviewed it. Right. Uh, but in the Wrangler world, there was always a Willys, and the Willys was kind of one step below a Rubicon. So you get all of the stuff that, that usually a Sahara had, but you wouldn't get the lockers uh, that the Rubicon had. So what they, you know, or the disconnectable sway bars. And so what they did was they created this, this, this Jeep that kind of is is you know a little bit probably less urban, a little bit more off-roady, but not quite the off-road monster. And that's what. Same thing with uh, the Willys version of that, right? You get the rear locker. Yeah, actually a limited slip in this case. Um, and the price, uh, so what they're trying to do, like you said, they're basing it on the sport and they're trying to offer value. The starting price, uh, according to the press release, is 36,760 bucks. So it's under 40 grand. Um, and then you're getting aggressive tires, like you said, rock sliders, cool paint jobs, you know, blacked out grills. Um, and then you can, op of course, option it from here. Tommy and I recently did a, a Wheelie's Wrangler yeah. review with the FJ Cruiser. And that Wheelie's Wrangler was 48. Mm. So you can still option them up, you know, way, way high if you wanted to. Um, but it, it's just cool. I mean, the, the graphics are cool. Just everything about it, I think, still has that it's like, it's like a Rubicon Lite. It is, in, in a way. Yeah. And uh, because, let's face it, you can option those up to 65. Yes, you yeah. can. Yes. And, and also, uh, the Wheelies Gladiator will be available as a diesel. We mentioned the diesel engine already. Uh, the diesel, the 3 liter V6, is going to be a $6,000 option because it's four grand for the engine, and then you have to get the eight speed automatic, which is two grand. So you combine them together, that's 6,000 bucks. Does um, it tow more? No, it does not. Because of uh, payload constricted. Yeah, it's, it's payload issues, you know, driveline uh, limitations usually, um, et cetera, et cetera. So, um, yeah, I like this, Andre. I really like it. I think it's a good kind of, if you don't want to go full on Rubicon and, and you don't want the sport, this is a really good place to go. Yeah, but I also want to bring up one other point about the Jeep. Here I pulled up uh, their website. Yeah. And I know I didn't do that for the other manufacturers, but I wanted to make this point. Uh, let's count the number of available trim levels. So they have Sport, Wheelies Sport, Sport S, Wheelies, ADF Anniversary Edition, Overland, Rubicon, Mojave, and high altitude. If I'm counting correctly, that's nine trim levels. So the Overland is kind of the Sahara in, in, yeah. in, the, in the Gladiator world, yeah. And yeah. Then this new high altitude starts at 51 grand. Yeah, it's like, you know, it's like a Harley. You can definitely make the Gladiator and the Wrangler your own. <laughs> there's so many different choices. Yes. Do you think it's too many? Is that what you're trying to point out? You think I, it's too confusing it, that we're starting to get into the point where it's just too many choices? It's, it's almost thing? getting there. Yeah. It's, it's getting there in my mind. Well, I know 80th anniversary is just this year, right? right? They're celebrating uh, their, uh, which, is, which is great, their heritage. Uh, but, but it's getting a little bit confusing. You know, Overland, if, if I was going to walk into the dealership, you know, if, if I wasn't, you know, in it every day like we are, it, I think it might get a little confusing, you know, as far as what, look, what you're choosing. Look, I mean, once again, it's like a Harley, right? The Gladiator, to me, falls into the lifestyle truck category. You know, Jeep really doesn't 
Uh, they run away from you know a wrangler with a bed, but it really is a wrangler with a bed at the end of the day. That's the best way to describe it. And wranglers are um, lifestyle vehicles, right? They're not. Um, they're, they're, they have become uh, vehicles that people use on an everyday basis, but for the most part, they're vehicles that express who you are or who you want to be. Uh, and, and then they're, you know, they kind of fall on, on you know, that's the exact, so the Gladiator, you know, if you've got the white work truck, which was that Nissan we had, then at the other end of the spectrum is the Gladiator that we have, right? Right. Right? Yeah. And somewhere in between are like truck trucks that you use for, yeah. you know, doing trucky things. And I guess to your point, the Gladiator, if you are purchasing one, you're going to research it, right? Yeah. You're going to research it, you're going to go deep on it, you're going to watch TFL yeah, truck. It's, it's not going to be a fleet purchase. <laughs> no, usually not. <laughs> you're not going to yes. get a fleet of gladiators. For unless you're renting them in Moab or something. Yeah, unless you're renting, it's not going to be like a, for your window washing service, right? It's yeah. not going to be the vehicle of choice for that. Right. Or your garden, gardening service. Yes. So, so finally, uh, let's talk about the bestseller. You know, we yeah. waited long enough. Yeah, we waited long enough. The Toyota Tacoma, what, has, uh, what have they done? Well, they have a new color for their TRD Pros. So these are minor changes, right? But we, we have to um, describe it. and They sell a quarter million of those a year. Yeah, they're still... And, and when, they don't depreciate. When asked, I think we've asked Toyota several times, you know, wh why are you successful in this? And they usually say, you know, we've been at it the longest. Which you is know, true. they never went away from the market. They always were in this market in the U.S. Um, and then options and choice. My goodness, talking about options and choice, they still have so many options. Uh, they have a new uh, lunar green. Uh, is a four slitter still available? Yeah, in you some, still, in some base trucks. Yeah. Okay, all right. Mostly they went to the 3.5 liter V6. And there's mixed reviews on that, right? Some people enjoy it, some people hate it. Um, they, they have new additions. They have the trail edition of the Tacoma now, which is a little bit more affordable. Starts at around 35,000 bucks. You mean sort of like the Willys edition? Yeah, in a way, yeah, in a way. So it's a little bit more off-roady. It's also available as a two-wheel drive though. So you can have it either way, four by four, by four or two-wheel drive. Um, they also have the more luxurious nightshade which is all blacked out. So it's a kind of all like dark, um, dark trim, dark lights, everything. And Triple it's, black. And it's based on their more, uh, kind of more luxurious Like models. a bat in a cave. You can barely yeah, see it, it is, like Batman's truck. <laughs> if, if Batman drove a Tacoma, he would be driving in a nightshade. Um, but still, still the same powertrain, same um, transmission choices. There's still the six-speed manual is still offered. Uh, there's still a six-speed automatic. And um, hey, why mess with success? Yeah, and pricing pricing went up a hundred bucks this year. There you go. Yeah, so. and you know I've actually seen Tacomas that cost as much as new when they're uh, on the used market. Uh, so I think I think Toyota knows that they're the uh, leader in this, uh, and they're notoriously slow uh, because they know that the reason they're the leader is because uh, their uh, reputation is one of reliability, which is well earned. You mean uh, slow to update? Yeah, and they yeah. and they, they they won't mess with. Uh, success and I don't blame him for it, Andre. Uh, so you know, if I were in Toyota's place, I would do that as well. But the the issue that they're you know running into is now what is now this now if and when the Nissan is updated, what is now the oldest truck in the in the field? Well, that might well the it's Toyota gonna, it's was be the Tacoma. in 2016, right? So it will be the Tacoma. Then. Yeah, it will be the Tacoma. Um, but here's the other thing: we did several comparisons recently. Yeah. We call it which truck is best for you. And I've, I've put the new Tacoma TRD Pro against the ZR2 Chevy. Um, we've put it against the Gladiator. And I can see it, it's aging a bit. The design, kind of the, some of the features, the comfort it offers, right? The cab is a little small. Yeah, I mean, um, I mean to me, you know, what screams aging, are, and whether you like them or not, you know, that's a whole different conversation. But anytime you have a tiny little screen, it just feels old, right? It feels like it's the last generation, right? I mean, Tesla broke the... Uh, a bank when they put this massive screen and not everybody's following along or they're following along with multiple screens and so mm -hmm. when you get into Tacoma and you see this little screen and you put on your satellite radio and you've got this postage stamp size you know album that shows up you kind of think to yourself this doesn't feel all that <laughs> all that new right but of course I mean they have all their technologies right the driver assistance yeah and there. the Japanese have been uh, really good with that yeah they have that and they have capability they have the shock technology suspension skid plates wheels 
but now that I look at the pricing structure, like the ZR2 is priced well uh, under the TRD Pro, right? More aggressively priced. Uh, the Gladiator is maybe a little bit more capable off-road because it has more ground clearance, you know, lockers front and rear, um, all that stuff. So if I was to Toyota and Tacoma, I would not be resting too much. You know, I think they need to, within the next couple of years, redesign this truck. Yeah, and I think that uh, they're putting a lot of their efforts into the Tundra now. We know there's a new one coming. Yeah. You know, we're seeing spy shots of it. We're seeing a hybrid. And I think uh, a lot of the engineering right now, or has been going into the Tundra, which is even older. Yeah, right. <laughs> right? That, that, we were talking about how old the, the Nissan is, the Tundra. Yeah. And, and, I, and I, make, I make it sound like, you know, old is, old is not necessarily bad. Don't get me like, hey, the newest thing is the greatest thing, uh, especially when you've got Toyota's reputation of reliability. But nevertheless, you know, when people cross shop things, uh, at some point we live in a culture where you do want the newest Tech, the shiniest, the shiniest stuff. toys, yeah. right? Yes. Uh, and, and we've got this slew of electric trucks coming, uh, which are going to completely rewrite the ball game. And like I said, the Rivian, which is you know a little bit uh, bigger than a Tacoma, but not much bigger, is going to be directly competing for sales for the Tacoma. So the question becomes, you know, at, at some point, how much competition can the Tacoma take without losing it somehow? Yeah, yeah without yeah. somehow saying, hey, we understand there's competition, so here's how we're responding to that and you can't keep building the same truck when like Rivian comes along and says you know here's an all-electric truck that does a tank turn yeah of course the Rivian will be a bit more expensive but still yes of uh, course uh, to your point yeah the technology needs to change having said that a fully loaded TRD Pro is not cheap Andre no it's like it's pushing like 52 53 yeah it's not a gladiator price right. tag. it's not like in the 60s but it's, but, it's up but there it's pushing the price yeah. as, as well i was just at the local overland shop yeah. um dropping off a camper and they have tacomas lined up like 10 deep you know the tacoma is still king as far as people building overland trucks so and they had one colorado and like 10 tacomas yeah and once again you know um if this is a decision driven by uh both uh, reliability and finances, it's, it's hard to, to, to say no to Tacoma, right? Because you know that it's going to hold its value, you know that it's not going to break down, uh, whereas, you know, the other trucks are not going to hold their value nearly as well, right? Mm -hmm. They're going to they're gonna be worth significantly lower than what you paid for them, whereas the Tacoma won't be. And the Tacoma will also be the more sought after in the used truck market. Absolutely, as we've seen. All right, so there we have it. There's your. Yep. Did we miss any uh, mid-sized trucks? I don't think so. We covered every many. So why are they called mid-sized trucks? Because I think in the in the history of trucks, there used to be those compact ones in the seventies. Yeah, the little 80s. tiny guys. Yeah, little tiny compact. The mini ones. trucks is kind of like to call them minis, uh, and then they grew. Yeah. So the, the, somebody called them mid-sized because they were one step. Because above. they were mini, they were right. right. They were a little bit bigger, um, and of course the full size and heavy duties kind of wore up there, um, and then the compact trucks disappeared. But they're coming kind of, back. Yeah, they're, 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 I hope they're coming back. The, you know, with the Hyundai. Ford Maverick, potentially. And the Hyundai. Right. Uh, Santa Cruz. Cruz yeah, uh, yeah. Santa Cruz? Yeah, yeah Santa, Santa Cruz. Cruz. Yeah, the Ford Maverick. So we might have a resurgence in, in small trucks. And let's face it, a mid-sized truck today is not like <laughs> a small truck 30 years ago, right? Or 20 no. years ago. A mid-sized no. truck today is about the same size as like an F-150 or From a Silverado. 10 years ago. Yeah. yeah, so yeah. These, are, these are big trucks. Yeah. Uh, and, and I think it's smart for people to buy... Not buy, but sell smaller trucks because, look, uh, if you live in the city where most people live, right, let's face it, most of the population is urban, uh, uh, even a, a, a mid-sized truck now is not going to be really happy in, uh, in a big city, in a yeah. big city, yeah. be that L.A., Chicago, New York, Houston, you know, wherever. It's, it's going to be just one size too big. Yep, I would agree. All right, well, there you have it. We've got a lot of new vehicles coming since it's the end of the year, Andre. Uh, and talking about massive trucks, aren't you going to get to go drive a big truck next year, uh, uh, next week? A, a big rig. I'm going to uh, yeah. I'm going to uh, Daimler Trucks of North America, and I'm going to drive a Western Star vocational, gigantic, like, quarry truck, Class 8. I'm really jealous, dude. <laughs> and, you, and you can do that because it's going to be on private property? You, it, you it's at their yeah. proving grounds. Okay, yeah. Right. We're going to drive them at their proving grounds. And you know what? I am, um, I have a resurgence 
I'm just signing paperwork with a CDL school. Oh, you're gonna go back getting your CDL? Yeah, you're I'm gonna, gonna, I'm gonna take, two. Good take, you, take two. Take yeah, take two, and good for you. Um, I'm working with the Southwest School the Driving School. Okay. So, and they're based in Phoenix and Vegas. So, hopefully, uh, in, within a month or two, I can get it. You'll have your CDL, and then you and Ken can compete to go up the I gauntlet with the the big yes. heavy duty is hauling whatever yeah. amount of weight. Yep. we'll be hauling. Uh, so that's exciting, Andre. I can't wait to see that. And uh, before we wrap this up. Uh, you just came back from our friends at Five Star, yes. uh, where you uh, got to uh, uh, test toe with a supercharged uh, Godzilla. That's huge, and that's coming this week too. Um, so supercharged 7.3 liter. The guys at Five Star, uh, it's never enough. You know, they, they, they like tuning vehicles. They already had a tune for the it's, Godzilla Damn, it's engine. America, dude. It's never enough. No, and now Procharger has a, uh, this is the first available, publicly available supercharged solution for this. And I was giggling like like a little boy uh, <laughs> driving that truck. I, I heard you did some zero to sixty testing, and the yes. numbers were astounding that yes. you got with it's, a, a, a it, Super Duty. It shouldn't be possible. It shouldn't. Are we talking under seven seconds? Yes. Uh, a six seven, sec under six seconds? Yes. Under five seconds? No. no. Okay. All right. That's, this that's, is this is a big F two fifty four wheel drive, you know, big heavy duty truck going under six. Oh, I can't wait to see that. And that yeah. video will be up over at TFL Truck, right? Yep. All right. All right, guys. Thank you for uh, joining us for another fun episode of Talking Trucks. As always, this is Roman. And Andre. Saying, check out TFL Car, TFL Truck, TFL... Off-road. TFL Bike. TFLBike.com. TFL yeah, yeah, that's yes. on the channel. And remember, what are we doing now? We're doing honest, actually independent and honest reviews. Absolutely. We've always done those, but now we're letting people know. <laughs> Ciao.